Hi guys, welcome to a video, and in today's video, I'm just going to be rating lesbian love scenes from lesbian movies. Ooh. Oh yes, it's happening. Full disclosure, I stole the idea for this video from the Gay Women channel. I am a nasty little hobbit who steals bread and ideas from other creators. I, I am. Watching love scenes is always an experience. Sometimes it's a heavenly one, and sometimes it makes me want to go back to church and spend quality time with the repressed lesbians who frequent there. Oh, I remember the eye contact very clearly. I have a lesbian Christian history, okay. So let's start with one of the most famous lesbian love scenes in one of the most beloved lesbian films. Carol. Now, I have spoken about this scene before on this channel, and I have mixed feelings about it, I do. On the one hand, it's Kate Blanchett, so it's automatically tens across the board. Honey. But on the other hand, there was a lot of awkward energy in this scene that I picked up on, and I'm not sure if it was Kate Blanchett having some kind of gay panic over being naked up against Rooney Mara, or if she just felt awkward about doing that scene in general. I'm not sure what the reason was. I mean, don't get me wrong, the scene is very kind of tender and beautiful and I'm grateful it exists, but at the same time, it definitely had a weird energy to it. It did. And for that reason, I rate this scene a 7 out of 10. It pains me to give Kate Blanchett less than a 10 out of 10, but the weird energy just brings it down to a 7. It it does. So next up, we have The Watermelon Woman. Okay, so what I love about this scene in The Watermelon Woman is how unapologetic it is, especially for the time in which it was made. There's a lot of tasteful close-up shots in this scene which felt really meaningful, and you can tell both of the actors are just having fun with this scene. And it's a part of lesbian cinematic history because of course The Watermelon Woman was the first lesbian film to be directed by a black lesbian, Sheldon so there you go. So I give it an 8 out of 10. I really enjoyed this scene, I, I did. I feel like I'm rating food, okay. So moving on to Ammonite. Now, this is a very controversial love scene and people have polarizing opinions on it, for sure. I personally like this scene. I was very grateful that Kate Winslet took the time to choreograph this scene because I think it made all the difference. And she really took care to make sure that Saoirse Ronan was comfortable doing this scene and again I think that made all the difference. But I felt like these two didn't really have a lot of chemistry so their love scenes missed the mark in that sense. But from a technical perspective I think that this scene is fine and it's a plus that both actors were so committed to their roles in this film because it was quite full on but I feel like they made it work overall. I just feel like the scene was slightly lacking in the chemistry department. But I am a sucker for Kate Winslet, especially middle-aged Kate Winslet, so I'm gonna give this scene a 7 out of 10 because I enjoyed it for personal reasons. I, I did. So next up we have The Handmaiden. This is a difficult one for me because there are parts of this love scene which I really enjoy and then there are parts which veer off into weird hetero male fantasy and distortion. This is unfortunately what comes of hetero males directing intimate lesbian scenes and the love scene in The Handmaiden felt quite disconnected and it was such an exaggerated performance, it was, and I think Sarah Waters called the love scenes in this film a spectacle, which kind of sums it up. Yeah. However, the chemistry between Heideko and Suki salvages their love scenes to an extent because I really love the chemistry between those two. So to be honest, I don't hate these love scenes. I actually, I enjoy them, but I enjoy them because of the chemistry and the way that the actors work together, not because of what's physically happening. Does that make any sense? Like I feel like the energy is good in these scenes, but the technical, physical direction aspects are a shambles. I rate it. 6 out of 10. Moving on to Gia, I have spoken about Gia before on this channel and I was really surprised at just how explicit the love scene was in this film, especially for pre-L word times. But Elizabeth Mitchell and Angelina Jolie have such electric chemistry and they're so comfortable with one another that this scene really, really works. You can just tell that they trusted each other and I think that makes all the difference in these kinds of scenes. Also, both of them are so, oh my God, 
god. Heartbreakingly beautiful. So, so beautiful. Oh, beautiful women. How could any of their scenes be bad? You know, it, it would at least be a visual delight. It, oh my gosh, I really love those two together. I do. I give their scenes a 9 out of 10. I just... I, I like, I just, I do. Next up, we have Disobedience, which contains one of the most infamous love scenes between Rachel Weisz and Rachel McAdams. Look, the best thing about this love scene is how committed the Rachels were to their roles and to lesbianism. I mean, Ronnie spits in Esty's mouth. She does, and Rachel Weisz deserved an Oscar for that, and she was robbed. This scene was very full on, but avoided coming across as silly. But whilst both actors gave 100% to this scene and to each other, and whilst I enjoyed it very, very much for Rachel Weiss reasons, I don't know if I was really feeling it between them. And for that reason, I give this scene a 7 out of 10. So next up, we have the Carmilla movie. Look, I love everything about this scene, except the clothing. But luckily for me, the clothing comes off. Natasha and Elise have this insane chemistry, which means anything that they do together is fire. And I can see how much care was taken with this scene. It's definitely one of the most realistic lesbian love scenes that I've ever seen. I'm saying seen a lot. This scene really ticks all the boxes. I I'm going to rate it a 9 out of 10. I would have given it a 10 out of 10, it's just the costumes bring it down by a point. They do. I don't like them! I don't! Okay, so moving on to Saving Face. I love this film. It's a very important part of cinematic lesbian history and just a great piece of work overall. I think the love scene in this film is tender, it's cute, it's funny. I love that they added an element of humour to this love scene because a lot of lesbian love scenes are kind of dramatic and heavy and serious and sometimes it's not that serious and I like that the film kind of portrayed that. Yeah, it just made me happy. It's like a feel-good love scene and I think that makes this love scene kind of stand out from a lot of what we usually get and I think both actors did a fantastic job. I love this film a lot so I'd give this scene an 8 out of 10 for sure. Ugh, okay, next up is blue is the warmest colour. I think it's safe to say this is the worst lesbian love scene in existence. This scene is not bad because of the actors, who are both incredible actors, by the way. It's because of the way this scene was directed, and all of this is on the director of this film. This whole scene is a heterosexual man's idea of lesbian intimacy. It just looked like the director got all of his inspiration from Pornhub. It, it, it did like... It was so ridiculous, my god. To add to that, there's also claims that the director was abusive on set and created a really kind of toxic environment so that's also really off-putting when watching this scene it's like you're not sure if they were even comfortable doing what they were doing in this scene and yeah, I mm. And it's a shame because apart from this hideous love scene, the rest of the film is actually quite touching and full of fantastic heartfelt performances. So this love scene is really just a stain on both this film and the lesbian cinematic universe in general. It, it is. I'm going to give this love scene a 1 out of 10 and if I see that director, it it's on site. It is on site. I'm joking. I've like, look at me. I just... No, it's on site. It, it's on site. That scene is cursed. <sighs> but recovering from that, let's move on to Desert Hearts. Now, this is a special one because the love scene in Desert Hearts is the first lesbian love scene in a feature film directed by a lesbian. And it shows. It's really special. I mean, Kate and Vivian just have this incredible chemistry and this love scene captured that electricity between them perfectly. Perfectly. You know, the scene is tastefully shot, it's intimate, and it feels organic. The actors were both incredibly brave for doing that kind of a scene back then, and it really paid off. This film is a 10 out of 10, and so is the love scene. Next up is Bloomington. Ugh, okay, so... 
no. The love scene or love scenes in this film definitely straddle the line between hot and cringe inducing. Look, you have two incredibly attractive women, which it's hard to, to hate on that, it is. But it's off-putting when one of those women looks like a teenager, a young teenager as well, and she's up against a fully grown adult woman. They're so mismatched. There's no realism to this film, which makes it really hard to take seriously. Look, they don't have the worst love scenes I've ever seen, but at the same time it's just... It, it's no. It's no. I'm gonna give it a 3 out of 10. Keeping on theme with the age gap romances, let's move on to Loving Annabelle. Okay, so the love scene in this film is morally wrong, but they went about it the right way. There's a lot of chemistry between Simone and Annabelle which really shines through in this film, and the love scene in this film works because there's been so much build-up to that point that it's a perfect release. It was done tastefully and it felt very balanced and I think it's a really beautiful scene. I'm gonna give it a 9 out of 10 because I have a I have a soft spot for this film, I do, and my god I love that film so much. Okay, next up is my all-time favourite I can't think straight. You know what's coming, there's a joke in there, okay. This love scene gets a 10 from me because Lisa and Sheetal's chemistry left me shaking, it left me bold, it left me crying on the floor. I Can't Think Straight is my favourite film, so I am very biased when it comes to anything to do with this film, I am. But I honestly think the love scene in this film is electric. It's brimming with both chemistry and Lisa Ray's gay panic, it is. Lisa and Sheetal just have that thing, they do, and it shines through on screen and I can't even articulate how this scene makes me feel. It. And on top of everything else, both Lisa and Sheetal are stunningly beautiful. I mean, I, I, it's goddess, it's g goddesses, goddesses. This love scene gets an 11 out of 10. I, I love it so much. Okay, next we have A Room in Rome. I don't like it. The love scenes in this film are just not good. I mean they're not the worst I've ever seen and I appreciate what they were trying to do but I just found the love scenes in this film rather awkward and some of the nudity in these scenes feels gratuitous and unnecessary. Also I found a lot of the shots and editing quite cliche with these scenes so I'm gonna rate it a 4 out of 10. I, I am. Next up we have Portrait of a Lady on Fire. Okay, so I know this film doesn't really have a full love scene, but it does suggest a love scene in its own mysterious artistic way. So I'm including it on the list. I mean, who doesn't enjoy a close-up of an armpit? There's not many people. Look, I think this film captures love in the form of visual intimacy which is refreshing to see on screen. It was like interpretive dance of a love scene. Maybe for that reason I shouldn't have included it in the list because it's its own kind of standalone interpretation of lesbian love, but at the same time I have to give it a 10 out of 10. I can't sit here and not give it a 10. That would feel like blasphemy against Jesus. Okay, moving on to I Care A Lot. I've never reviewed this film on this channel because I hate it, but I do love Rosamund Pike and would love to be railed by her. So I am going to include the three second lesbian love scene she did in this list, since she has been kind enough to provide us with it. It was a great three seconds, it was hard, it was fast, it was powerful, it was Rosamund Pike, and she harbours so much dyke energy in this film that it is just a joy to watch watch, so really the scenes themselves are a 6 out of 10, but Rosamund Pike, I just have to give her a 10 out of 10 because I just Okay, moving on to Bound. Now, for this love scene, the two male directors actually hired a feminist sex coach and it definitely paid off. I feel like even though the scene is quite explicit, it works because of the extra care that was taken with it. Corky and Violet have incredible chemistry and Jennifer and Gina just took on these roles with no reserves. It paid off because Bound is definitely in the top 10 greatest lesbian films. It's, it's amazing and 
so is the love scene. It is. It was giving me dark, sinful, mafia, noir vibes and I give their scenes a 10 out of 10. I do. Thank you, feminist sex coach. <laughs> Next up, we have Below Her Mouth and my god, these scenes are so explicit. Look, I think women's bodies are beautiful but I feel like excessive nudity is used as a tool to distract people from the awful storyline in a film. You know, it's like this film is bad but it has naked women so that's a plus and whilst that is correct it also doesn't really distract from the fact that the film is is bad. Yeah. I felt like the nudity was excessive. Okay. Jasmine just looked so so uncomfortable in the love scenes in this film that made me feel really weird about watching it because I was like what if she doesn't really want to do this and yeah it was yeah. There's nothing offensive about the scenes in this film but there's a distinct lack of chemistry and you could tell that the actors were there just for their paycheck and I know that all acting is a performance for a paycheck but you're not supposed to be reminded of that whilst watching the film. You're supposed to kind of get lost in what's happening and that just... No, the love scenes felt repetitive and soulless and I'm gonna give it a 2 out of 10 because it was not good. Mm. Moving on to Better Than Chocolate. I've included this film because its love scene is interesting. It was giving me film student who is trying their hand at expanding their artistic boundaries vibes. Yeah. I found the painting quite erotic. I did. And I also felt like the nudity in this film was kind of purposeful, you know, and meaningful. And I felt like the love scenes were, were cute and were interesting and something different. So for that reason, I'm going to rate it an 8 out of 10 because I liked the painting. That took me by surprise, but I am learning new things about myself all the time. And finally, we have Benedetta. Now, as a disclaimer, I haven't watched this film all the way through and I don't have any intention of doing so, but I did watch the love scene specifically for this video. Yes, it was literally for research. And look, I think the actors did a really good job and I hope they were well paid for what they had to perform because they had to perform quite explicit scenes. I feel like the love scenes in this film are good in places because of the actor's performance. From what I've seen briefly of the film, it also feels exploitative and reductive. And that exploitation and that reductive kind of approach to the content in this film also bleeds through into the love scenes. Benedetta is a weird one because the actors are incredibly committed and some of their love scenes together are good. I, like, I think that they're good, but there are other scenes which just have this kind of salacious male stamp on it which just made me grimace. Yeah, it's a weird one. I'm gonna give Benedetta a 6 out of 10 because... You know when you're just watching something and you're like, oh, a man directed this. Yeah, there's a lot of that in Benedetta, but okay. Okay, so that was my list. Rating lesbian love scenes from lesbian movies. Thank God I exist to make this content because what would you all do without... Be more productive, you would. Weirdly enough, I feel like the more explicit a scene is, the more awful it is to watch. And it's funny how that works because you wouldn't think that would be the case when looking at beautiful women. Women. Sometimes less is actually more. It is. Okay guys, so let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. If you're a lesbian, if you're a woman who enjoys watching lesbian love scenes, come and join the Suffolk Underground Club. Just come and join it. If you don't join it, I will just go and live in the woods. I will pack my shit and I will go and live in the woods. That is, that is what I just, I might do that anyway. Support my move to the woods. Okay. <laughs> Look, when you join the Suffolk Underground Club, you support lesbian content, women's voices and gay magic. I just say in words. Okay. Don't forget to subscribe for instant disappointment and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.